coming up next, we're gonna be doing a labiaplasty. So step one, we're gonna clean it out of the septic solution. This is iodine, sterilizes the area. This particular labiaplasty is being done asleep. Typically we do them awake. In this particular case, we're combining this with breast surgery. So that's why she's asleep. Otherwise this could have been done with her fully awake. So step one, prep antiseptic solution. And then I'm gonna put some sterile drapes, towels around, and we'll get going with the surgery. So I put sterile drapes all around. So this is a surgical clean area. The rest of the OR is not, people sometimes ask what happens. So the whole OR is not sterile, just the surgical field. Now I've done my markings before we came into the OR. And if you take a look, her labia has this triangular shape and there's a fold that goes forward. So typically labiaplasty means removing the excess labia. Here we're doing what's called anterior extension because the fold goes all the way through from the clitoral hood. The clitoris is underneath there, we won't be touching this. It's just on the sides, there's extra skin that goes full length. So I'm gonna be trimming all of this. On the other side, slightly different shape. Her right and left labia are two different. There's thicker finger-like projection here. This is sort of thin. This is pretty thick. So right and left is always a little bit different. So we've removed all of this. So there is the excess tissue that's been removed. It is not a lot, just enough to make a difference. So this is just the labia part. This is the middle labia, the finger-like projection. And this is the anterior extension that was over the clitoral hood. So you can see most of it was anterior, a little bit posterior. And you can see it's much nicer. Now we're gonna go and remove the excess on the other side. So I removed tissue from the other side, nice and smooth. So if you look down here, you can see this is her left labia. This is her right labia. Two different labias, so they look a little bit different when removed. Again, most of it is sort of middle to anterior. The posterior part is pretty thin, which is very small resection. Nice and smooth now, no more projection. We're gonna put some stitches in there and you can see there's pretty much no blood. This was pretty much a bloodless surgery. And the final step will be to suture the wounds together. I'm gonna be using an absorbable stitch so the patient doesn't have to take them out. They're gonna fall out on their own. And we'll just run this the length of the labia. Now these are absorbable, which is great, but it also means they're fine. And the tissue is very fine. So it's very, very important for patients to understand they need to be very careful after a procedure like this because they can rip this open very easily. If you sit down and if you fall on your butt, anything like that, you gotta be super, super careful because the wound's breaking open. It's probably the most common complication after these procedures. Be super careful. Uh, squatting is something people don't think much about, but it's something you wanna avoid for a couple of weeks after the surgery as well to make sure that these wounds don't break open. We are done with the labiaplasty and close all the incisions. There's her right labia, there's her left labia. We're gonna put a little dressing on it and she's all done.